Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is April if you're new here and we're gonna do today my January wrap-up. In January I read 13 books. They're all right here and I'll go a little bit over each and every one of them. Now this month was kind of weird because I was co-hosting with Daphne on Team Snow Princess. I have no idea who won yet on the Once Upon a Readathon that Hannah has created. So I really love that readathon. It's very open to be reading like whatever you want to read. There are like prompts because of themes and everything that you can win bonus points for, but you don't have to do that. And honestly, for most of the month, I didn't read a lot of books with the bonus points in it, but I did read some good ones. I read whatever I wanted. <laughs> Let's just get right into it. So the first book I read for January for the readathon was a novella called Stolen Ice Bride by Angela J. Ford. I have read an Angela J. Ford book before and I wasn't a fan of it, but I actually kind of really enjoyed this little novella. This I think is a series of books by a lot of different authors. I know there's a Claire Sager book in this one too. Um, that I really want to read. This one has to do with a mage who she mixes potions and stuff like that and she's chosen as a bride for this king of Winterland and he takes her back to his land. So a lot of this again is a road trip romance. I really love those types. Um, this one was really adventurous. Um, there's a whole part about it going through an ice cave and kind of things and I thought that was really cool about it. I did end up giving this four stars. I thought it was much better than the other Angela J. Ford book that I read. The writing is really good. I'm really curious about this author but I think they're going to be a little hit and miss for me. It just depends on the book and the tropes used. The other one was like a Phantom of the Opera book that I wasn't a huge fan of. But this one was definitely more fantasy romance. Also the hero in this one the hero was super chatty and you don't see that a lot. Like you see a lot of like stoic, like two word sentence type heroes and not this one. This one was very, very chatty. <laughs> so I just kind of liked it. I thought it was something a little different. And then I read A Midnight Clear by Casey Bateman. This again was another novella. This one was just okay for me. It was with a Russian princess and she meets her brother's best friend on a tavern and he tries to help her home type of thing. I just thought it was okay. It wasn't anything to write home about. It was all right. And then I read Claimed by the Bear King. This is by Jessica Grayson. This one I read because it was a Snow Queen retelling and it was a steamy little fairy tale about, um, I don't know, some kind of girl going off with a king again. <laughs> Listen, I think that's why I stopped reading a bunch of these early on in the morning because they all seemed very similar, like too similar for me. Um, so I had to switch it up after this book. This book, again, wasn't bad by any means, but it was just okay. It was so okay that I didn't even write a review for it, honestly. I just gave it three stars. <laughs> it, was, it was just okay. There was nothing wrong with it, nothing bad with it. Just wasn't too memorable, honestly, in my opinion. The next book was a lot more memorable than the others. Um, this was White Horse Black Knight by Evie Marceau. Um, this one was just, it had some interesting things in it that made me so curious. Um, I will say most of the book is pretty typical fantasy romance. You have a girl married to a king or betrothed to a king and she's got to get to him. But of course his guard is tasked with escorting her to the palace. And of course they fall, you know, for each other during the journey. However, like this girl, part of her stipulations of betrothal is that she has to carry out this old um, story about a goddess writing naked to her loved one to show that she's like not hiding anything from him. So he makes her ride on a 21 day journey completely naked and bareback on horseback. And <laughs> the other thing that's weird about this is that they all have some kind of magical powers because they're God touched. So the king only wants to marry a God touched person um, and she can commune with animals. But the guard, he is also God touched. And part of his magical powers is that he can um, smell her virginity. Like he knows she's a virgin because he can smell it on her. 
<laughs> really? Like what? <laughs> Uh, this hero is very toucher and die like like he will absolutely murder people for her um a it's his job and b he's just into her and they're definitely fighting their attraction to one each other throughout this journey again i just love a good road trip journey and then she does some pretty cool things with like animals and bees in this one um towards the end that i really liked and i'm so curious about where the plot is going with this because there's this whole underlying subplot of this big fantasy war that's coming there's a lot of different things about where she comes from and i just thought this was really cool the second book um comes out in march and i'm so ready for it honestly i really want to read it so ultimately i get this one four stars i just thought it was a little bit unique um there are little parts of it that are maybe a little bit slower but honestly a good story and then I read three historical romances. I did have a vlog about this um, earlier this month. I read You're the Duke That I Want by Lenora Bell, Her Adventures in Temptation by Megan Frampton, which I ultimately DNF'd. And then I read Any Duke in a Storm by Amelie Howard. The Lenora Bell book I gave four stars. This was a Grease retelling and it made me sing through the whole thing. I just love the whole thing. Like if you want a Grease retelling, this will give it to you. But with like historical ball gowns and curricle races instead of like car races you know like like it was the whole nine yards on this book and i really really enjoyed it and then any duke in the storm is like my favorite pirate historical romance book now like i really loved this book it had a lot of action it the romance was great and it was pretty spicy honestly um and then i just loved all the adventure with it this heroine also is a complete badass like she is so badass she's on my list now for all the favorite badasses that i have <laughs> um i just really loved this i did read this as an arc and in the beginning there are a lot of parts in it that are overly descriptive which i think really drags down the pacing of it but once i got past like 50 percent mark or something like that i didn't have those feelings anymore um, I just really, really enjoyed this heroine and this hero. I love Amelie Howard's books, of course. This whole series, this is a whole series, um, the Daring Dukes series. This is a fourth book. But you honestly don't need to read the others if you don't want to, like just go into this one. However, I really highly suggest that you do read the others because they are all really, really good. Um, I just love this whole series as a whole. I think I've given each and every one of them four or five stars. It's great. Um, and then I really wanted to go back to some kind of winter book. And um, so friends of mine, including Maggie and Vita, <laughs> on the Discord. So we read Jack Frost, a frosty gay erotica adventure. <laughs> unfortunately i gave it two stars this just wasn't weird enough like it was supposed to be a weird book because he's like jack frost you know like like somehow he snow turns into jack frost and then they have a relationship and it just really wasn't weird enough and it there was a lot of missed opportunities in it i mean for a gay erotica i do think it was really good in those moments like it was very spicy and i liked the relationship of it but like everything else just didn't work for me and then and then i read the ever queen oh, i really loved this book um i did give it four stars there was just a few elements that i think were missing from it but oh, what a great duology again this is like a pirate fantasy romance with vikings in it um in the first book the ever king um this is like a spin-off series from another like nine book series but i didn't read that series like i just went into this one and i thought it was fine like i don't need the backstory of all everyone's like parents like i just don't need that for me personally so i went into just going into this one and i just love eric bloodsinger like he is a man he is such a man and oh god you know i love a good pirate there's also like a really interesting pirate ship in this like the the ship is made out of something that I just have not heard of before. Also, magical lands, that kind of thing. Oh, I just, the whole like captive, captor type 
romance in the first one was really great. What I got in the, in the Ever Queen that I was missing from the Ever King is the Viking aspect of it. I think the Viking aspect of the first one, the Ever King, was a little weak in my opinion. Livia's family is the Viking side. And I just wasn't feeling it as much. Like I really wanted to feel it, but I had read some other Viking books very close to the first one. And I was like, I just wasn't getting that enough, you know, by comparison. So I think that's what was missing from the first one. But the second one, I feel it. I feel it. The Viking vibes are palpable and I really enjoyed it. Also, I really felt the longing in this book more between Eric and Livia. I think that's just due to the circumstances where the book starts out at in the second one. And then also the second one was incredibly more brutal. Like I, I just loved the brutality of the second one so much. Um, also they're on, I'll just say they're on a, an island and what's going on on the island, I just really loved that. Why I gave it four stars and not five stars are just two little things that I think um, brought it down just a little bit. One, um, in the middle of this book, there's just like a giant sex fest, honestly. There is. <laughs> it wasn't bad by any means, but it really brought down the pacing of the story for me. Like I was like, okay, let's get this over. Let's move along here. Like for me, I don't mind spicing my books at all. In fact, I freaking love it. But um, when it starts to like take over from the entire story, that's when I'm like, okay, let's get back to the fantasy portion of this romance. <laughs> A little bit for me. Um, the other thing is the one reason why I really loved the Ever King is that it has incredible anxiety rep in it. Livia gets panic attacks and she's an anxious person and Eric really comforts her in a way that brings her back to herself. In the second book that was nearly non-existent for me. I didn't feel it at all. I feel like it was just magically gone. Like it wasn't even talked about. It wasn't anything other than one quote that I will I love, like I made a whole reel about it. I love that quote, but that's it. Like Livia did not seem like an anxious person. She almost seemed like a different person from the first book, which I can kind of see that she grew a little bit, but it just wasn't mentioned, period. So I think that's what I missed most about the Ever Queen and why I gave it four stars, but I highly recommend this duology. It's so good. It's so action forward. And I really loved Eric and Livia's story. I specifically love Eric. Like I just, he's definitely book boyfriend material. And then I read a book called Heavenly Bodies by Imani Iru. I hope I said that right. I probably didn't. I'm so sorry. I need to look that up. I should look this up before I make the video. Uh, that's my fault. <laughs> but I really liked this book. Um, again, it was really fun. I read this with a couple friends of mine that are not part of the book community at all, and they also enjoyed it. Um, this one is about gods and how some gods are literally walking around with humans. In this book, our main character, Alara, is a princess fleeing her kingdom because this star god person um basically killed her whole family and took over her kingdom because she's part of some prophecy that says like she will kill a god or something she'll fall in love with a god and kill a god i don't know something like that um so she goes to the neighboring kingdom which of course is the enemy kingdom and um they negotiate to take her in in order for her to be used as a weapon because she can wield like three different powers which is supposed to be like like all badass material right well of course she doesn't know anything about her powers so she's being trained by the prince of the enemy kingdom and their relationship grows it's a little bit of an enemies to lovers story because they obviously have some preconceived notions about each other that they really need to break down those barriers with. I really enjoyed this. I feel like this was a great debut from this author. I don't think she's written anything previously and um, I really enjoyed it. This reads like a CW show. Like I always say that about Fourth Wing. It reads like a CW show. It's constant drama, okay? It's constant action and this feels very similar. The two leads are very antagonistic with each other to a point where it's annoying sometimes and I just kind of roll my eyes about a lot of the things that they do. There's this whole dancing thing that happens in the book that I absolutely hated, but that's all right. It was just a like small part of it. 
Um, there were some really great quotes in this. And then there is things like PTSD trauma care. There is period care, like the hero cares for the heroine when she's on her period. And also there's this beautiful quote about stretch marks reminding him of ocean waves or something like that. It was a really beautiful quote in it. I really loved those things in those small parts of this book. For some reason, this book seems to be listed as YA on Goodreads. And I just want to make it clear that this book is very adult. Like about the 75% mark is about where they get together at and is a lot. Okay, is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there's like three scenes specifically so if this book is adult it, i would probably classify it as new adult but again this was just a story that kept me intrigued throughout the whole way and i definitely want to read the second one i think it was interesting enough for me to continue on and then i read a polar expedition and other stimulating research opportunities this is by cass o'shire this is kind of like a cozy fantasy romance shifter romance um our leads in here is a scientist researching this material that gives humans powers and then there is burn who is a polar bear shifter he's kind of like a guard tasked to guard this secret area where all his people live because humans don't know that they exist and of course she's walking right to his area so burn he is told that he must basically kill on sight anybody trying to go to his land which they call the sanctuary but Siren is just so cute and quirky. She talks to herself. She writes notes to herself, that kind of thing. Burn is so smitten with her. But he's like stalking her from afar as a polar bear, like in his polar bear form. <laughs> so she knows something's like watching her. And she's like, would you just eat me already? And it just is so cute. When they actually get to the sanctuary, there's like, she has to defend herself, like saying she's not going to hurt anybody, that kind of thing. And Burn sticks it out for her. And I just really thought this like book was very cute, like super cute, super adorable. Burn is like a cinnamon roll daddy um character actually not a daddy he's an uncle okay there's a difference burn is an uncle to twin nieces uh, that are like half orc half human so adorable he dotes on them it's just so lovely um i you know me i don't really love like sweet romances that much but this had just enough like sweetness to spice ratio that i really adored it um tiff from tiff talks pages already read the second one after i told her to read this one she says she loved it even more so now i just really want to read like this whole series like i want to keep the series in my mind and i need to read the other one stat okay i ended up giving this four stars and i really liked it so definitely please check this one out if you don't check out any other ones check this one out it's a novella length okay you can read it very quickly and then the last two books that i read um i read a lady's rules for ruin by jennifer haymore i gave this three stars again it was fine it was okay it was another matchmaking historical romance and i think i found that i just really don't like that um the heroine in here she ruins herself because she's so tired of the marriage mart and then she becomes a governess to the duke's newfound brothers okay that he never knew he had so he needs like a governess to teach them the ways of the dukedom like make them not street urchins you know and um of course they like have a little romance and that kind of thing it was fine it was fine it was good it was fine i really like jennifer haymore as a writer i think the writing is really good it just like again i'm not into the matchmaking thing and that's just a me thing and then I read something completely out of my comfort zone. This was Frostbitten by Rebecca Zanetti. I really wanted a winter thriller romance type of thing. Um, <clears throat> this probably wasn't the best choice for me because I also gave it three stars. Um, this is a Deep Ops number six book. So you see a lot of characters from previous books that I never read and that's okay. You don't need to for the story, but just know that all these other people have their stories, <laughs> okay? Like they're all, all there and they're all present in the story. So in this one, you have Millie and Scott. Millie is like a gadget guru. She is definitely like a Q. It's mentioned many times from like James Bond. 
She loves her gadgets and she works for the government. She's trying to install some listening devices into the office of someone they're checking out for fraud. And she meets Scott. <clears throat> Sorry, my like cough really like today is not the day apparently to be talking a lot. <laughs> she meets up with Scott during one of her operations and he kind of ruins everything by making her a witness in his divorce settlement. And so then people are after them. Okay, they're after them for many different reasons. There's a couple action scenes in here that were pretty good, but I think where it loses me is that I expect a romantic suspense to be full of action, lots of it. And I just don't get that. Like most of this was a crime drama or like a murder mystery, like honestly. Like I wasn't signing up for that. I just, I really want a very, very action forward romantic suspense and I just, I didn't get it. This book was spicy and I really liked that about it, but, um, and I liked Millie and Scott's relationship. Like I thought it was good, but mm, again, I just, it wasn't the greatest. So only one five star for me this month, which is kind of a downer. Like I thought I would have more five stars in the beginning of the year, but that's okay. We'll get there. I still enjoyed most of the books that I read, like majority of them. They were great stuff. Thank you for joining me today on this wrap up. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe because I have a lot of amazing books that I'm gonna read for February and I can't wait to get to them. Um, and thank you again for joining me today and have a great day. See you later, bye.